also an initiative that residents and the local community can take part in. Uh, you know, we want, we want to see people coming out, having a coffee, we want to see people talking to their neighbours, and it's been really fantastic to partner with Bicycle Network and the schools to run these initiatives and really see, um, you know, some healthy, happy street space. Being part of Open Streets has been really exciting. We're interested in making people view their neighbourhood streets in a different way, um, being spaces for everyone and multi-use spaces, not just for three ways for cars. And just listen to all this noise. It's, it's great having everyone have so much fun around you and just being active. No, we're really stoked. We should, we should happen every day. This is very attractive for parents and kids to spend together. I think it's um, encouraging people to ride to the school. I think it's definitely a good idea to get people active and getting people involved with the community. Because of this it got a lot of me and my friends to ride to school every day. I get to see all my friends and talk to new people. My name is Angelica Panopoulos and I'm your new Mayor of Mary Beck City Council. I'm a lot of councillors, members of the gallery and to our viewers live streaming tonight's meeting. My name is Councillor Angelica Panopoulos and I'm the Mayor of Marybeck City Council and the chairperson for tonight's council meeting for planning and related matters. It is my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's meeting. I'd like to start by acknowledging that we're meeting on the lands of the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people and we wish to acknowledge them as the traditional custodians of these lands and waterways and would also like to pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging and to all First Nations communities who significantly contribute to the life of this city. This council meeting is being recorded and web streamed live to um, council's website and Facebook. The recording will also be available as video on demand and gallery attendees are advised that they will be recorded during the meeting. A reminder that as councillors, we will act in accordance with the Councillor Code of Conduct, which will support the principles of leadership and good governance that secures public confidence in the office of councillor. In the event of an emergency or a disruption, we may be required to take action to ensure the safety of attendees. For members of the gallery and councillors attending in person, please follow the directions issued by council staff and security officers. Thank you all for your understanding and cooperation. So councillors and officers in attendance, um, I'd like to introduce the other councillors in attendance tonight. We've got councillor Adam Pulford. Hi everyone. Councillor Mark Riley. Good evening all. Councillor Monica Hart. Councillor Oscar Yildiz. And councillor Sue Bolton. And the following councillors have been approved to attend tonight's meeting via electronic means. Councillor Helen Davidson, who's the deputy mayor. Good evening. Councillor Anna-Livia Carley-Hannon. Good evening. Councillor Helen Pavlidis. Good evening. Councillor James Conlon. Hi, everybody. And Councillor Lambros Tafanos has also been approved, but he's not yet here with us this evening. Um, I'll also introduce Philip Priest, the Group Manager of City Development and members of the Urban Planning team who are here with us tonight. Councillors, do we have any apologies from other councillors for tonight's meeting? No? All right, I'll now move on to disclosures of conflicts of interest. Councillors, are there any conflicts of interest to disclose or to declare, sorry? No? Okay, confirmation of minutes of previous meeting. Councillors, um, could I please have a motion for the confirmation of the minutes of the council meeting for planning and related matters held on the 22nd of March, 2023. Councillor Pulford to move, Councillor Yildiz to second. All those in favour, all those against, I declare that carried. So before we move on to the reports for consideration, I will outline how this council meeting um, for planning and related matters will run this evening. For the item in relation to a planning permit application, one, the relevant planner will introduce the report and the officer's recommendations. Two, I will then give objectors the opportunity to make their submission. And three, after this time, the applicant will be given the opportunity to speak. If you're making a submission, please clearly state your name for the record. You're requested to present viewpoints clearly and concisely on why you support or oppose the planning application. 
Please don't repeat what earlier speakers have said, and please keep the discussion focused on relevant issues and points not previously raised. If you're opposed to a planning application, would you please inform the meeting why you're opposed and suggest an alternative approach which would satisfy your concerns? Please use this opportunity to focus on your concerns rather than matters of detail in the officer's report. Please note that there is a three minute time, time limit for each speaker, uh, but as the chairperson, I do reserve the right to increase or reduce the time available to any speaker. So presentation of reports, we've got four reports this evening and the first report is 5.1, City Development Activity Report, March quarter, 2023. Um, are there any conflicts of interest to disclose? All right, do I have a motion for this report? Councillor Bolton to move. Councillor Pulford to second. Councillor Bolton. Yes, Councillor Pulford. Great, we'll put that one to the vote then. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried. So the next item we have this evening is 5.2, which is 165 to 171 Nicholson Street, Brunswick East, Planning application MPS slash 2022 slash 359. Do we have any conflicts to declare? No. Nope. All right. I'll ask Mark Hughes, uh, the unit manager of urban planning, to present the report. Great. Thank you, Mayor and councillors. I'm presenting the item at 165 to 171 Nicholson Street in Brunswick East. Permission sought for a three story building that will contain a childcare centre, food and drink premise, and some townhouses. The um, site is in two zones, so being in a mixed use zone and a residential growth zone, also within the activity centre, within a design and development overlay which provides height guidance for the activity centre and also in a parking overlay. In terms of its strategic policy setting, it's an area where increased densities are encouraged and an overall height guidance of about 11, or of 11 metres. In terms of the surrounds, you can see there's um, the more intense zoning to Nicholson Street, and then we move into a residential, neighbourhood residential zone to Aintree Street. Some images of the site, some more images from Aintree Street, and again, this is from Nicholson Street. You can see there's a tram stop at the front of the site too. Um, the proposal, quite briefly, seeks permission for a three-storey building, um, which fronts Nicholson Street. There's a childcare with 118 children, there's a food and drink premise or restaurant of 90 square metres. There's six three-storey townhouses to Aintree Street. The height is around about nine and a half metres. There's 32 car spaces in a basement access from Aintree Street and a total of 10 bicycle spaces. Um, just quickly, in terms of the layout, you can see the portion or the front half of the building which is facing Nicholson Street contains the commercial uses being the food and drink premise and the childcare centre and to the rear and facing onto Aintree Street, you can see the vehicle access and the six townhouses as shown on that plan before you. In terms of consultation, a total of 25 objections from 21 properties have been received. Mostly, most of the concerns relate to car parking and traffic generation and some concerns with amenity. A planning and information discussion meeting was held in April and that was attended by eight objectors. No resolution was reached at that meeting although some extra information was circulated regarding traffic impacts. Um, the key considerations here is we, as the officer's report outlines, that the childcare centre is appropriate for a local need. It's appropriately located in an activity centre, broadly aligns with the planning scheme strategies, and um, some, some of the noise impacts can be resolved through acoustic report. There is an amended officer recommendation that I need to table at this point and that's um, including conditions from the Department of Transport, which came through after the report was drafted. So those, those conditions have now been added to the officer recommendation. Um, and that recommendation is to issue a notice of decision to grant a planning permit for, for the proposal. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mark. Um, we have four objectors who've indicated that they wish to speak online. And first up, we've got Brett Applin and Amelia Savage, who I believe are online. Sorry, and some in person, I just realised this. <laughs> Great. Amelia, can you hear me? 
a second here. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Uh, you've got three minutes. Great. Thank you very much for your time, councillors. Um, I live on Aintree Street, two doors down from the rear of the proposed development site where the car park access point is proposed. Um, and I did email a number of councillors about this earlier this week. My partner and I, Brett, emailed you, but I just wanted to follow up in person about this just to stress our concerns, which are primarily related to traffic flow and the absence of traffic management strategies in this general neighbourhood to mitigate um, issues caused by the volume of vehicles travelling and parking in that area currently. And while I appreciate that these concerns uh, are broader than this particular application, I just um, think the proposed use of the site as a childcare centre with the concentrated influx of cars into Albert, Victoria and Aintree Street and the likely increased parking. Okay, okay, Amelia's frozen. We'll give her a second to hopefully come back to us. Back. Okay. Right yes. Yes. You might just have to repeat the last couple of sentences. Okay. I just, I was saying that I, I appreciate that this is broader than the particular application and our concerns, but I just don't think it's reasonable to approve a site use such as this when there aren't measures in place already to manage these traffic issues that we're experiencing right now due to an increased development in the area. Um, and we already see on a daily basis cars in gridlock on Albert and Victoria streets where they intersect with Nicholson Street. And that's only going to be exacerbated by this use with these peaks of traffic that are going to be experienced in those peak hour morning and afternoon periods. Um, I'm also concerned about safety of the tram stop outside the site because it's a really narrow footpath beside an accessible tram stop. So there's no barrier, there's no curb between the narrow footpath and the road. Um, and having kids and prams just enter the site there just seems incredibly dangerous to me in the way that the, the tram stop currently operates. Um, so that's probably the extent of my concerns. Um, and I really thank you for your time. Thank you, Amelia, for taking the time to talk us through your objection. Um, next up, we've got Louise Honman, who is here on behalf of objector Rod Duncan, and she is here in person. Hi, Louise. Um, we'll just check that there's a little green ring on your microphone. Uh, yes. Perfect. Uh, okay, it is, then it's it on. Is lit. Yeah, it's on. You can hear me. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, good evening, and thank you, um, Mayor and councillors, for affording me the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Um, I appreciate it. Um, my name's Louise Honman, and I do live at number 10 McCull Street, um, just around the corner from the development site. I note that the key reasons given for this um, development are that it is an acceptable building form, it is an appropriate scale of development, and it has no unreasonable impacts. I'd like to address the unreasonable impacts issue first. Um, I believe that there will be an inc a vastly increased traffic generation during concentrated periods of pickup and drop off um, for the childcare centre. I believe that there will be reduced cyclist and pedestrian safety in this area. There are a lot of school children who ride their bikes to school around this area between 8 and 9 a.m. when you would expect that this centre will generate large volumes of traffic. I believe that the Aintree Street configuration is unsuitable for increased traffic of this magnitude. Whether it's 40 movements a day, 50 movements a day, 90, 100, we don't know. Um, it's a bit of a guess. Um, I would put it to you that even at the lower end of that scale, um, Aintree Street will fail to cope with the traffic. On the matter of an appropriate scale of development, this is an integrated childcare centre and townhouses. It asks a lot of its site. It is highly intensive. I understand that we are in an activity centre and in a transitional area, but this site is very intensive. It does coordinate childcare and townhouses with no physical separation between them. So Schedule 20 to the design and development overlay expects that there still will be reasonable amenity for residential properties adjacent to and within the Brunswick Activity Centre. 
The DDO controls, in my opinion, do not provide a sufficient contextual response for adjacent residential properties to maintain that reasonable amenity. And that does result in some poor outcomes. In terms of acceptable building form, I understand that mid-rise development can be provided very well without cribbing on residential standards. Um, I do believe that this particular development is rather dismissive of its urban context and of the residential standards attached to Clause 55. The activity centre location, that being the Brunswick Activity Centre, is not in my opinion, a sufficient justification for a reduction in those standards. Thanks, Louise. You've just hit the three minutes, so if you could wrap it up. Okay, Thanks. yeah. I've just got a couple, if I could just address a couple, a couple of yep. those standards. Um, B1 and B6 apply to neighbourhood character and front setback. There are eight freestanding houses in Aintree Street with setbacks of between three and seven metres. It's not an emerging character. The adjacent houses of 8 and, eight and the 8 and 8A Aintree Street would require a setback for their development of 4.6 metres. Three is provided. On site permeability, 20% of the site is expected to be able to absorb stormwater. However, we're given a figure of 9.8% permeable area. Why should we accept a 50% reduction when this standard provides space for additional landscaping as well as stormwater retention. Thanks. Um, Louise, you've just hit the four minutes, so if you could give, me, give us your final sentence, just to wrap it up. Okay. I, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, on a similar line, there is a reduction in private open space. There is a reduction in access to sunlight and north-facing windows, and there is also... Um, some side and rear setback uh, reduction as well. So my, in my conclusion, I suggest to you that Aintree Street will fail to cope with the level of traffic generated during peak periods. I also suggest that sustainable modes of transport will be impacted and the risks increased. That the cumulative effect of small non-compliance to the residential standards leads to a suboptimal medium rise development and there is considerable loss of amenity for 163 Nicholson Street and Aintree Street. Thanks. Thank you, Louise. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So next up, um, we've got Eleanor Beveridge who is here in person with us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, is it working? Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm hoping not to repeat what Louise That's said. Right. I, um, my family live directly opposite uh, the site. And my biggest concern after hearing the developers plan for a three minute he said the underground car park would have a three minute pooling capacity and I currently drop off at a daycare down the road. And um, I just am concerned that that three minute allowance will lead to like queuing in the street uh, during those prime times that Louise mentioned of eight and nine and in the afternoons. And I feel like that would impact the safety of the street. Also um, having driven out of the street on um, about eight o'clock, the other morning, I, I'm worried I won't be able to actually exit my house because in order to exit the house, if there's people queuing either side for the underground car park for the childcare centre, um, I, I believe we might end up stuck. Um, and it seems that we're assuming because of the density of the area that people won't drive. Um, but Unfortunately, we can't pre make those presumptions um, because, yeah, I don't currently work in the CBD and neither does my partner. So even though 
we would love to be able to use public transport to get to work. We actually have to drop our child off with a car on the way to work. Um, so although I, I just wanted to say that I'm not against uh, medium and high density development in the Nicholson Street area, and I think that Brunswick East needs facilities, I'm just concerned about the impact of the driveway of this business that's being proposed and the lack of car parking that I know two of the three bedroom apartments have been um, allocated one less car park than what's the council allowance and that concerns me because um, already it's quite tricky to park in the street because I live on Aintree Street so if you're um, offering one less car parking space in two, three bedroom, again, it's making an assumption that those people that are going to be moving in there are only going to have one car, which I think is um, probably unlikely <laughs> three bedroom abode. Um, but that was my main objections. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks both for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so next up, we've got Peter English, who is online on behalf of the applicant. We can bring Peter into the Zoom room. Great. Peter, can you hear me? I can. Fantastic. And we can hear you. Um, you've got three minutes. Okay, so I'm online now, am I? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, councillors. My name is Peter English. Um, I'm the town planning consultant who uh, was involved with managing this application with council. Um, there isn't a lot I need to add as um, we think the application is summarised very well in the officer report. Um, I'd also note that we have no issues in relation to any of the conditions proposed by council officers. Um, rather than repeating what's in the officer report, I therefore just wanted to highlight a few points um, in relation to the application and in particular the strategic context. Um, as the councillors would be aware and as it has already been explained, the site has frontages to both Nicholson Street and Aintree Street. And what's significant and not necessarily always apparent is that the Aintree Street side of the site is also situated within the activity centre. Um, there's different zones, but Nicholson Street's in the mixed use zone, but Aintree Street is within, or the Aintree Street half of the site is within the residential growth zone. So it's a unique site within Aintree Street. It's the only site which is zoned residential growth. The rest of the street is zoned uh, NRZ. And it's also the only site in Aintree, or this part of Aintree Street, which is situated in the activity centre. So what that means is from a strategic point of view, it's in a significant change area and significant levels of change um, are envisaged. And that's not just along Nicholson Street, but also Aintree Street. Um, in relation to character, there's just been some notes made in relation to character. Um, our assessment of that is that the character along both streets is extremely diverse. Um, and that includes zero setbacks along Aintree Street as well. So even though Aintree Street, the majority of Aintree Street is situated within the neighbourhood residential zone, um, it still contains a very diverse character. The design response has been to locate the childcare component along the main road and keep that away from um, uh, uh, Aintree Street, although the access is from Aintree Street, that's the only option that Vic Roads would let us um, do in terms of access. Um, the residential component has been contained to Aintree Street simply to maintain that residential consistency. Um, while it's an obvious point, the site's got excellent access to services and facilities and it has a, a tram stop at the front door. Um, in terms of the childcare centre, my client has a operator already engaged and signed up to operate the childcare centre. Um, and it's significant that they've, been, they've identified the, um, this area as one which uh, has a need for that type of use in the area. Uh, the residential component, which faces Aintree Street, um, we consider will provide additional housing in the area, but also contribute to the diversity of housing forms in the area. That's a brief summary of the proposal. Oh, sorry, just one last thing I wanted to say about traffic. Um, the proposal was effectively designed from the ground up in consultation with our traffic engineers, um, but I'd also note that the council's traffic engineers have raised no issues in relation to access and also um, the vehicle movements to and from the site. Um, that's, that's a brief summary of the proposal. If anybody has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thanks, Peter. I might see if um, any office, uh, any sorry, councillors have got questions of officers or of yourself. 
Councillor Hart with a question for Peter. Yeah. Great. Yes. Yes. Um, thanks for that, Peter. Um, I've got a couple of questions which sort of dovetail off each other. Um, was the expectation that you believe that most um, parents would be ac accessing this, the um, childcare centre by car? Um, I read the traffic report and I saw the, the figures that were calculated in terms of concentration during the peak hours, but I just wondered what your own expectations were. Um, well, the, we're, we're reliant on the traffic engineers. The traffic engineers have made provision for um, for, for access via vehicle. Um, it's it's significant in that it's a two-way ramp. We did explore at one point the option of a single ramp with a signalling system, um, but that wasn't acceptable to either our traffic engineers or or council's traffic engineers. So, in terms of concerns regarding vehicle queuing, um, vehicle movements in the street. Um, it's a two-way ramp. There's a circular movement within the basement, but there's also dedicated parking available for um, for drop-offs and pickups. Um, and the advice we're being given is that will be sufficient for for the demand that that will create. Will create, excuse me. Um, and, and I'd also note that's not just the uh, consultant traffic engineers that we've engaged. Um, we've got a similar response from council's traffic engineers. Yep. The second part of to my question um, mm -hmm. through the mayor is that I note that, that um, Council's rationale as well partly was that there would be people accessing it through alternative modes of transport given, given that the area we're in, in, in Brunswick that we're in. That led me to the question of then the provision of sufficient bicycle infrastructure for people who may be accessing it with children on bicycles and my concerns are around, I think, that there's four located on Nicholson Street. I'm not sure if they have the ability for, like, family cargo, family trailer bikes, which we often see. Um, and I'm also, I guess, the other issue for me that raises is just consideration of some of the safety aspects. Um, so given that we're on an arterial road with a, a 60 kilometre speed limit there. So I guess I'm interested in the considerations around the potential impact for what the thoughts were. In terms of the, in terms of, so you're asking whether well, or not enough questions. bicycle One, parking's provided. Let's, let's, two questions. Yeah, let's One, narrow it down to a question yeah, instead of the lovely, explanatory lovely, statements. Lovely. Yeah, two yeah. questions. Well, um, how many of those four part of the, is it four that would be for the childcare centre? And how many um, would be there for larger bikes, uh, cargo, cargo bikes, or sort of with family trailers? Is the first is my question. Yeah. So four, four car spaces, four bike spaces, excuse me, have been provided along the Nicholson Street frontage. If they're the ones you're referring to, yeah. um, my my understanding of those, they're referred to as tail rail um, bike spaces, which with the upright um, curve in them. Um, I don't think they're um, designed for cargo bikes on the back, um, but I guess in terms of the the configuration and the, and the number of, of bike parks provided, again, it's been done um, with the advice of our traffic engineers in order to meet what they would regard as an empirical demand for, um, for that type of um, transport on the site. Right. Great. Was there another question? Yeah. Would you be open to any condition that might look at increasing and providing so, for those sort of methods of transport? Um, look, we'd certainly be open to any condition. Um, I, I can't Looking answer you off the top of my head in terms of where that would go and whether it would be it would be possible. Um, having having had personal experience with picking up children on bikes from childcare centres, um, I know that it's a very um, quick uh, exercise getting in and out because you're not looking at parking a car and, and uh, manoeuvring it. Um, so whether or not it's needed or not, I, 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 as I said, I'd go back to the to the recommendations of both our traffic engineers and um, and council's traffic engineers. Um, and as I said, I, I can't answer off the top of my head where that would go um, from a configuration point of view. That I need to consult the architects. Okay, thank you. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Um, are there any other questions at all for Peter or for officers, uh, Mark? Yeah. Thanks, um, Peter. Just. Um confirming that bike drop-offs can happen in the basement as well, and I assume there's a space in the basement for that, or...? 
Just bear with me. I'm assuming people can. Oh, well, there's no reason why it couldn't occur because the stairs and the lift are available directly to the childcare centre from the basement. Great. Thanks, Peter. Uh, Councillor Conlon? Um, yeah, I also have a question around the bike access as well. So um, the four bike parks that are on Nicholson Street, um, they are, so that, that tram stop is one of those, uh, the ones, what are they called, like a level one um, that's directly level with the footpath. So um, I guess in terms of the question for Peter, yeah, like I, I you concerned about um, the, the, the speed at which cars are going to be travelling along that 60k um, road, that that will probably mean, I don't think, I can't really see parents using those for... Sorry, um, Councillor Connor, can we just get to a question, if, please? I'm, get, I'm getting to that. OK. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, so my question would be, um, if you consider that they're probably unlikely to be actually used because of how close they are to a, a very dangerous arterial, again, um, yeah, would you be uh, open to a condition that increases the number of um, bike parking provision potentially within the basement? Um, yeah, and as I said, um, we would certainly be open to the... Um, I'm sorry, I'm just looking around at the plans while I'm talking to you. We'd be certainly open to a condition that requires more bicycle parking, whether or not we can do it. Um, I certainly can't tell you at, at this short notice because the basement has been designed... There's been, there's been a fair bit of work that's gone into this basement design with the traffic engineers in terms of... Um, the number of spaces and the manoeuvrability and that sort of thing. Um, for example, it may require the removal of a, uh, a staff space, um, which would probably be able to um, uh, attract a number of additional spaces in that area um, where bike parking could, but bike, bike usage, excuse me, could certainly be encouraged to use that space. Great, thanks. Peter, um, were there any other questions for um, Mark as the officer or for Peter on behalf of the applicant? No? All right. Thank you for, for taking the time to come in and present um, with us this evening. So, councillors, if there's no further questions, could I please have a motion? And I can see that Councillor Riley is on his feet. Yep. yep. Thanks, Councillor Riley. If I have a seconder, I'd we'll, like to we'll move. Just what are you moving? Yep. yep. I'd like to move the officer recommendation okay. with the improved uh, tram part that came through today. Yep. Um, and Councillor Carly Hannon, I can see your hand up. Is that to second it? Great. Okay. Councillor yeah. Riley to move. Councillor Carly Hannon to second. Councillor Riley. Thanks, Mayor. Look, um, this is tricky, this one. Um, I've been listening and reading uh, residents' concern. Um, so the issues with the mixed-use zone, the residential growth zone and the, and the activity zone do mean this is quite particular and we've heard a bit about that already. I won't kind of repeat that, but this is actually going for residential growth, which we don't often get many of these, I must say, at these, at these palm meetings, but it is adjacent to the neighbourhood residential zones, which I'm hearing from the presenters and the, and the community tonight. The good thing about this is that we're getting a childcare facility, which I think is a real plus, even though if it's having, giving us some challenges because it's right next door to a, a tram stop. We're also getting food and beverage um, for the area, which with the increase in, in uh, population is um, something to be um, looked at in a positive way as well. I hear the issues with the permeability, but I have to say the storm rating is 102%, but so it actually ex ex exceeds the storm 100% rating. So uh, while it's capturing more water, it may not be making it permeable to the ground, but there are, you know, the ESG or the environmental sustainable design aspects are not, um, you know, uh, are better than, than many applications we get. The, the NATO's rating of seven stars and the best score is 51%. So, you know, it, it just gets over the middle of that. The height of the, the buildings in this one is not something that we need to be, um, turning our minds to for once, which is really good in one of these palm meetings. And so on balance, a lot of that's very tricky. The main issues I'm hearing from residents are around traffic issues, many of which are already existing. Um, so I think a lot of those things could have been begun to be addressed already, but we can certainly address them apropos of um, any decision, depending on how it comes out tonight. 
the plus for me around a childcare centre is that the spread of the drop-off isn't like a school that I teach and you have this massive um, everyone arriving for 9 o'clock or, or for pick up at 3.30. At a childcare centre it's, it's a, a, a better spread so you don't get that same concentration. There will be a concentration but not to the same crunch. Um, so on balance I think a lot of the issues here can be worked out um, if this is um, approved tonight. We can work through those and we can make adjustments to um, Aintree Street with that the issues of people getting um, blocked and not having to be able to pull out of each other's way because it's quite a narrow street, but that's often the standard in East Brunswick and Brunswick. We have to do this all the time. So if we have to find laybys or um, no standing areas where you can just pull across to help get the flow going again, we should be looking at those things apropos of this application. So, um, you know, in summary, I think this application is, is uh, a good thing the community. It's going to put some pressures on that street. I'm hearing that loud and clear, but I think we should be able to try and address those um, depending on how this starts to play out. And I would encourage most people to use the drop-off in the basement um, because that's going Thanks. to be a lot Councillor safer Rowe. than the tram stop. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Councillor Carly Hannan is the seconder. Um, thank you. So overall, I think it's a, um, a really great um, application and I think uh, Councillor Riley already summed up a lot of the positives. Look, I do agree that um, the whole precinct around that area have, has a lot of traffic challenges. And I do like that idea of creating better flow so you can't have cars parked up against every single street preventing um, that yielding ability. In terms of child cares, I just wanna speak, um, given that I'm someone that experiences them on a daily basis at the moment to say, I've had I've been at two childcare centres and at a kindergarten, all in residential streets, and I think I understand the angst that residents are raising. But I actually think that, as Councillor Riley said, um, the, when you see a childcare in action, it really is a very quick job off and pick up, and it doesn't involve a lot of parents there at the same time. So many parents will be walking and, and using bicycles, and I'm certain there'll be cycling, um, park, bicycle parking in the basement because that's been at two of the centres I've been at. Um, and also pram parking is um, really important. But I think that you'll find, um, even with the, um, the use of cars, that the times that everyone comes is not all at once. And I've been at centres where there's only three car parks for the entire centre, and yet we still actually don't have an issue. So I would feel very comfortable with the fact that this does have the basement parking, um, the two runways and the um, ability to turn within the car park to say that this is probably better than so many childcare centres we see in the area. And most importantly, there's a demand for childcare. We really need to meet that demand. Um, and it's so good to see a developer actually putting a use already into a plan rather than waiting to see what the market provides us with. Thanks, Councillor Carly Hannan. I'll see if there's a speaker against this motion. Yep, Councillor Hart. Yeah, thank you. Um, in speaking against it, I would also like to foreshadow that I have requested um, an alternative motion um, of refusal. Um, and I understand and I hear, and it, 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 it's a very challenging application, as people have said. Um, Brunswick Activity Centre, two different res residential um, zones and three different purposes um, of use um, on the same site. Arterial Road, a small, a small little street, and then um, two significant roads, Victoria and Albert, that, that found it. So they're the challenges. The issues that concerned myself when I when I listened, when I heard it at the pit, were certainly around the issues that have been raised around, I think, what occurs on both sides. On the um, Nicholson Street side, the issues of safety and the conflict of around a, an, a, an accessible tram stop, which elevated footpath and road that is, is aligned. The, um, location of the tram stop, the positioning then of the entrance at that point and the structure of, of people um, dismounting with bikes and little children. So I have real concerns around those safety issues. 
Likewise, um, I heard it appeared that Aintree was referred to as a secondary, a secondary road. Aintree is a small little street. It connects uh, Victoria and Albert Street. And I know the concerns are around the concentrations that will occur, often over usually one hour of peak hour. And I think the calculation is 90, an expectation of 94 cars. And the concerns, I think, is well understood, because I'm hearing now there's going to be a need for traffic calming. That probably means um, taking some car parks out of Aintree Street, which is already, I think, a capacity, and the area's got capacity. So those are my concerns. I think the issue, obviously, childcare is a very, very important um, consideration for us. That, but the issue here is the suitability of that site for the usage and the scale that that's going to mean in terms of impact on traffic and amenity for the, for the current residents um, and for the area. That's my concern about the, what the impact is from that commercial, which is actually in the mixed use zone, but the entrance um, to support that, which is based um, in a residential area and the impact. Um, I'm also concerned, I think, that while there's a notion that really we won't have that level of traffic, I don't think there's been an effort to actually put in the level of infrastructure required around bicycle access for the families that would be actually utilising it. And I'm hearing that tonight. It didn't appear to figure in, in the, the, the focus. And that's Thanks. a concern. Thanks, Councillor Hard. I'll see if there's a speaker in favour of this motion. Um, yes, um, with, I'll speak in favour if I can um, propose some amendments. Uh, yeah. Well, um, um, would you like to speak in favour or propose some amendments first? Um, I'd like to propose my amendments first. Okay, great. What were those amendments? Um, so I've got four amendments. Um, one is to increase the setback um, of the townhouse to Aintree Street um, to six metres. Um, and to, well, the other one is to oh. increase the, the sustainability rating by half a star um, to seven and a half metres. Um, yeah. The other one is to... Councillor Conlon, we might just um, go through them one by one and see if they're acceptable to the mover and the seconder, and then um, we might take yeah. it from there. So the first one was on the setbacks, um, you said from the townhouse and Aintree Street. So, um, yeah. Councillor Riley and Councillor Carly Hannon, I might go to Councillor Riley first. Was that acceptable yeah. to? Um, not the first condition. The other three, okay, I can let. let I let's, can let. Let's hold on and I let Councillor Conlon spell them out for us. So hold on. So the first one's not acceptable. So Councillor Conlon, what was your second um, amendment? Um, to increase the sustainability rating, it's called the Natters rating, from seven to seven and a half stars. It's a pretty small one. Yep, Councillor Riley. Uh, yeah, with the way that it's worded, um, if it can be reached, um, that's a, I, I'm happy with that to yep, accept and incorporate that. Councillor Carly Hannon, great. Okay, Councillor Conlon, your next one. Um, the other one is to uh, get to install a safety barrier on Nicholson Street. Yep, Councillor Riley and Riley first, and then Councillor Carly Hannon. Yes, again, with the officer's, the, wording. the officer's wording, the way it's there to try and um, achieve that outcome, that seems very reasonable. Great. OK, and Councillor Carly Hannon, I can see you nodding. OK, Councillor Conlon, uh, your last one. Yep. Um, which is all, the other one is to uh, seek traffic calming measures on Aintree Street. Um, look, I would be doing that in any case. It doesn't need to be a condition, but I'm OK with that as well. OK. Thanks, Councillor Riley. Councillor Carly Hannon is nodding. Okay, so Councillor Conlon, we've got three of your four um, amendments that are now becoming part of the substantive. And we'll just make sure with our governance team that they'll be up there as part of the motion. Um, Councillor Conlon, did you still wish to um, propose the setback amendment as a separate amendment? Or did you just want to yeah. go back to speaking? Okay, so it's, we'll propose that as an amendment. Yeah. All right, and we'll see if you've got a second that, and then we'll treat that as a regular amendment. So, um, Councillor Bolton to second that. So, Councillor Conlon, if you could please speak to your amendment. Um, yeah, so as we've heard tonight, uh, there is a lot being um, fit on to, fitted onto this site. So, in general, I support 
uh, the uh, you know, the proposal to have a childcare centre in this part of Brunswick. I think that's a, a needed uh, thing, which would be good for the area. Um, the other part, but I guess the other reality of this proposal is that it's a, it's a tricky site because while it's in an activity centre, it's also um, in a, a residential or about to residential zone, but it's also right next to a heritage property, which we haven't really talked about a lot tonight, which is um, a single listed heritage property um, just to the south on Aintree Street. Um, and so the heritage advice, uh, council's heritage advice, which is in the council report, did make quite a few comments about um, how the proposed uh, townhouses uh, interact with that um, site. Um, so part of my, my this amendment is about um, increasing the setback of the townhouses from the street, um, from I think it's about three metres to six metres, um, to, so from, from a heritage perspective to make sure that, that um, is, the proposal is more um, properly uh, integrating with that um, with that heritage property. So it's not sort of dominating that and so sort of that is um, the neighbourhood character, I guess, is better retained. Mm -hmm. um, but also, it's also about trying to, you know, scale back the development a little bit because it is quite, again, like a lot is being squeezed onto this side. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically what that amendment um, is about. Um, yeah. And so it's basically largely in line with what um, the council's uh, heritage advisor was asking for. And I know that's not exactly what the officers wanted, but um, yeah, that, that's something that I've taken note of. And I think it would help um, on a number of fronts. Thanks, Councillor Conlon. Councillor Bolton. Great. Um, do we have a speaker against this proposed amendment? Councillor Riley. Thanks, Mayor. Um, look, you know, on principle, you know, increasing the um, setback would be, you know, you know, potentially a useful thing. But I don't think six metres is reasonable. It's going from three to six. Um, that's that's a huge impact on the designs. It would mean they have to go back the whole re redesign the townhouses. The point I made in my um, original uh, remarks was that this is a residential growth zone, and so it is a you know it's an it's, it's a bit. It's quite different to the, the, the property to the south and the one to the north, which are uh, neighbourhood residential, which is minimum um, change. But this is allowed um, to have this sort of change that we're look, that's being proposed tonight. It's, and because it's an activity centre is another reason why it's very hard to achieve you know, an increased setback. I just think it's a little bit unreasonable to be doing that at this stage of the, the, um, the process, to be expecting them to go back and redo that to double it, when in fact there are properties in the in Aintree Street that don't have any setback, and many of them have three to seven. So it seems to me to be kind of acceptable an arrangement to have a three metre setback, because you'll still get a garden and so on there. Great, thanks, Councillor Riley. I'll see if there are any other speakers in favour of this amendment. <laughs> Up to you. Thinking if I have anything else to add on this particular point, in addition to what Con James Conlon raised, is I think um, I think especially because um, there is a, a heritage building right beside this development, I think that in particular justifies a um, increasing the setback beyond what the developer is proposing to do. Um, the the um, proposed setback by the developer is, you know, I think pretty under par compared to um, the majority of dwellings on the street, especially the older dwellings. And I think, you know, I think this, um, you know, I think there are other issues with the development application, but I think this is um, quite reasonable, um, you know, especially given the existence of the heritage um, building right beside, or heritage house right beside this development. Thanks, Councillor Bolton. I'll see if we've got any other speakers against this amendment. If not, um, Councillor Conlon, would you like to exercise your right of reply? Uh, so, yeah, I've already said everything I need to say. Great, all right, we'll put that one to the vote then. All those in favour of this amendment regarding setbacks? One, two, three, four. All those against, oh. yeah, yeah, I've got Monica. All those against is one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven. Great, so that has been lost and we'll go back to the substantive motion. So um, we had the move of the seconder and a speaker against. I'll see if there's a speaker in favour of the substantive motion. Or a speaker against the substantive motion. Councillor Bolton. I just, um, I've been sort of toying with this. Um, I obviously do support an increase in childcare um, and childcare centres, um, you know, spread around the municipality. But I think one of the reasons why I have sort of struggled with this particular application is hearing from local residents that um, Aintree Street is an informal cycling route. So it's not an official cycling route on the council website, but it is an informal cycling route, um, you know, coming out of Flemington Park and also connecting to, with a number of schools in the area, including Northcote Secondary College. Um, students um, in uh, East Brunswick are zoned to Northcote High School or Northcote Secondary College. Um, so that, you know, it does mean there's a lot of east-west uh, cycling traffic that um, people coming down Aintree Street, um, you know, are cycling to those east-west links. And I sort of feel that that is um, a problem, um, especially because of the concentration. Um, maybe it might not be as concentrated as at a high school, but I feel that there is still a concentration of traffic in the, mo in the morning and afternoon during pick up and drop off times. I think if the traffic was just balanced across the day um, and didn't have the morning and afternoon peaks, maybe I wouldn't be um, speaking against this development. Um, but I think the fact that this is an informal cycling route um, and I just see it as being um, dangerous. Um, in because of that. Um, possibly if it was a smaller childcare centre, um, I think it might not be such an issue. But I think the scale of the childcare centre, the scale of the traffic and the fact that it is an informal cycling route, um, to me indicates that that could be a problem. I know this was an issue that was raised a lot when we were discussing um, the East Brunswick Village and the traffic inter interacting with a cycling route at the back of the East Brunswick Village. Um, that was some years ago, but I think that was a big factor in Council's consideration of that configuration. And so I feel that this is, um, I can't see a way of resolving it through this permit application. The streets is a particular size, the childcare centre in this um, development application is a particular size, which generates, um, you know, around 90 odd um, vehicle movements in, in an hour um, during peak, and peak periods. So um, that's why I'm rising to speak against this application. Thanks, Councillor Bolton. Um, I've just been advised that if councillors want to speak up and um, stand up and speak to also just like lift their microphones up so that we can all hear it properly, just FYI. Um, so we have, um, so that was a speaker against. Um, Councillor Conlon, you've just emailed councillors regarding a another proposed amendment did you wish to move that yeah yep could you um outline that phil you just sent an email or james yeah. just um, provide some advice all right well we need to wait for that to come all right great while we wait for that um council pulford to speak in favor of this motion please I'll be brief as I think this item's been debated a lot. I just think sometimes I feel like there's not going to be... Some councillors will never find an application that they're happy to support. I think we just hear so much... There's been a lot of refusal lately, and I think not based on grounds that we really have the power to um, refuse or, or to do these things um, that we have in the planning scheme. So concerns me that we have councillors saying, you know, we need more childcare, but then prepared to vote against the provision of more childcare in our city. Um, I think this is a good proposal. I think um, it's right in the inner city. It is near a tram stop. People, uh, we've heard about how there will be a range of mode of transport people will use to access this site. Um, I just think we really need to think about um, 
both listen to the advice that we get from various transport traffic engineers, um, as well as lean on the powers that we do and don't have in, the, in terms of what we can actually do. And I think, yeah, I just get really concerned that this is going to be permanent no's coming from this council uh, when we are in a housing crisis where we do need more supply of childcare, where um, the city is growing, and yes, it can be managed in a way. Like planning and development needs to be managed. I think I hear that there's parking issues in that street, but there are other ways to, um, that, to address those issues. Uh, the street could work together and get some restrictions on, on, those, um, on one side of the street, for example, which might help uh, keep cars moving out of there or might clear um, one side of the street to make transport through there easier. We can't necessarily address every issue through this planning application, but there are ways that um, life in that street can be, I guess, improved or, or made safer. And um, if, yeah, I hope residents will, will keep working towards those aims beyond this application and council can support them to do so. Thanks, Council Pulford. Um, in that two minutes in which you spoke, um, we have now <laughs> received some wording which firms up the amendment that Councillor Conlon um, had sent around via email. And so, Councillor Conlon, um, can you see the words on the screen? Yeah, I've seen the email as well. Great. Uh, Councillor Riley's just got a point of clarification. You just want to make the point of clarification that there are six on-site bike parks already, as well as the four on the street. So just thank you. I'm aware of that. I can read the plan. Okay, Councillor Sorry, Conlon. Not, we, all right. We, yeah, we don't need a, that I'm back not... and forth. That was thank you for the clarification, Councillor Riley and Councillor Conlon. Um, if you wish to move your amendment, um, we'll see if there's a seconder. If councillors have read the amendment, um, it's just up on the board now, and it just got circulated via email. So we'll see if Councillor Conlon's got a seconder for that amendment. Councillor Bolton to second, Councillor Conlon. Um, yeah, so basically the, one of the key uh, reasons uh, for supporting uh, for the, the officer's uh, proposal to support this application is around the, um, the fact that this is in a inner city location, it's on a transport corridor, um, also very close to um, key strategic cycling links. Um, and we also know that a lot of people are going to a lot of people in the Brunswick East area and sort of around, the, yeah, the immediate surrounds do um, get around by bike. And also there's a lot of cargo bikes and a lot of people do get um, around with their kids like that um, in this particular part of the municipality. So I think that is kind of a reason to support um, this proposal um, given that location. Um, but I mean, the reality is that, yeah, there's there's 10 car parking spaces proposed for this for this proposal. Um, and I'm just wondering if that is enough because, again, I think in, in reality, the four bicycle parking spaces that are going to be on Nicholson Street, yeah, I just can't really see how they're going to be used in practice because we know that those raised tram stops on Nicholson Street are already very, really dangerous for, um, for tram users and pedestrians. That I think it's going to be unlikely that parents are going to want to um, take their kids to the centre and park, you know, first of all, on the 60k hour road um, and then also given that it's so close to the um, passing cars on a level, um, you know, a level tram stop uh, footpath situation. Like, it's a bit, pretty dangerous. Uh, so that really means that there's probably six um, car uh, bicycle parking spots that are being proposed, which are in the basement. So I guess my amendment is about increasing the provision of those um, spaces um, because we know that a lot of people are going to ride um, to get to this centre, and that'll sort of help to ease... Um, the congestion on the street because if there's more people, if it's easy to get there by bike, then hopefully that'll encourage less car use. Thanks, Councillor Conlon. Uh, Councillor Bolton is the seconder. All right, I'll see if there's a speaker against this amendment. Nope, okay. I'll see if there's any other speakers. Actually, I might test first if it's acceptable to the mover and the seconder and just to be incorporated in the substantive. Councillor Riley? Yep, that's fine with me. Thanks. Yeah, fine with me. Thanks, um, councillors. So then we don't actually have to have a vote on that. That's become part of the substantive. Um, and so we'll go back to the actual substantive motion. Um, and we'll ask have Councillor Pulford speak in favour of it. I'll see if there are any other speakers against this motion. 
Okay, if there are none, I'll see if there are any other speakers in favour of this motion. Nope, all right. Um, I'll let Councillor Riley, do you wish to exercise your right of reply? Thank you, Mayor. Just briefly, yeah, thank you for the debate, councillors. Um, it's really important to talk to the, the issues. I'm not in, interested in playing any of the, the players, but to talk to the issues. So um, it's been a good debate. Um, I think a good business would, would actually add far more car parking space, uh, bike parking <laughs> spaces rather, because they know that's what their community needs. So good business will be responsible to community. So I'm more than happy to add one in and require it, but I would have thought um, a sensible business will actually be listening to their community and providing for them, particularly um, with the sort of comments that Councillor Carly Hannon made earlier. So I think on balance this is difficult, but I really would ask the, the residents to work with us to, to sort out the issues on Aintree Ain Street and particularly to see how the drop off and pick up times work um, at the centre um, with that, uh, the queuing and the, and the parking that will be there, but particularly the bike provision and, and for cargo bikes and others to be able to use that rather than um, uh, Nicholson Street. And the other point about Nicholson Street is we should be advocating to reduce the speed on Nicholson Street. Um, Ligon Street goes down to 40 um, in large parts. We should be doing the same on Nicholson Street. And in fact, um, I've been a champion of that. We tried to get 30 k's across our city many years ago, which was knocked off um, bluntly by the councils at the time, but we would, um, we're trying to get that across the rest of our city and I think a major street like this, we should be um, advocating to the state government to reduce the speed, particularly on these, this style of uh, tram stop, which we need to have. Thanks, Councillor Riley. So we'll put that one to the vote then. All those in favour of this motion? Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All those again, oh, eight, sorry. All those against? One, two, three. All right, Mike, I'll division, just call please. for a division on that one. So all those in favour were Councillor Yildiz, your hand was up, yep. Councillor Yildiz, myself, Councillor Riley, Councillor Pulford, Councillor Davidson, Councillor Carly Hannon, Councillor Conlon and Councillor Tapanos. Sorry if I raced through those. Um, and all those against were Councillor Bolton, Councillor Hart and Councillor Pavlides. Okay, so um, I'll now ask Mark, um, as the officer, if you could please outline the next steps. Thank you, Mayor and Councillors. The Council's resolved to issue a notice of decision um, as amended by Councillors throughout the debate tonight. That decision will be posted to both the permit applicant and all objectors. Objectors have a 28-day period in which to lodge any review at the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal. Um, should no review be lodged, a planning permit will be issued. The permit applicant has 60 days to lodge an appeal against any conditions. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Okay, next up we've got 5.3, which is 6 Leicester Square Tullamarine Planning Application MPS slash 2022 slash 368. Councillors, are there any conflicts of interest to disclose? <coughs> no? Great. All right, I will ask... Jessica Thomas, Acting Principal Urban Planner, to present the report. Thank you, Mayor and Councillors. This application is for 6 Leicester Square in Tullamarine. Uh, it is an application for the construction of a two-storey building uh, with a basement car park and it's to be used as a childcare centre. Uh, the centre will accommodate 113 children with hours of operation 6.30am to 6.30pm. Uh, with all parking provided within the basement. Uh, the site is located within the neighbourhood residential zone. Uh, you can see here that it is a residential area of Tullamarine and Coventry Street just to the east is the street that leads in and out of Gowanbrae. Uh, the application went to notice and received 23 objections from 20 properties. Concerns raised generally um, related to traffic and congestion as well as safety and whether there was a demand for the childcare use. Uh, there was a PID that was held and while no changes were agreed to, the applicant did present uh, results of a further traffic assessment. Key considerations um, are outlined on this slide. Um, overall, it's considered that the site is an appropriate location for the childcare use 
and that the building has been designed to limit off-site amenity impacts. All the car parking is provided on site and council's traffic engineers are satisfied that it won't um, unreasonably exacerbate the existing traffic and safety issues um, and it provides a satisfactory ESD response. Um, given the limited off-site amenity impacts and the local community needs that the use will serve, it is therefore recommended that a notice of decision to grant a planning permit be issued with key conditions that will require additional bicycle parking, details of acoustic measures via an updated acoustic report, and a public works plan with a uh, requirement for directional signage. Thanks. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so we've got one objector who um, indicates that they wish to speak, and that is Amanda Callis, who is online. So we'll just bring her into the room. Ah, okay, so Amanda is not here with us. So we might then just go straight to Jason Sumner, who is the applicant and is also joining us, hopefully, online. Jason, can you hear me? Yes, I can. For some reason, my uh, video's not working. So apologies for that. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, we can't. Yeah, it has been working, but it's just stopped for some reason um, today. So, but I can I can see and hear everybody. So oh, my okay. for that. So I'll try to see if I can fix it. it. Must be something in my setting somewhere. That's all right. Give me just a sec. We can just continue, right? Yeah, all right. Well, um, Jason, we can just continue anyway, even though we can't see you, we can hear you very clearly. So um, you've Not a got, problem. Thank you've you got three much. minutes there. Thank you. Do you want me to, to start off, do you? Yes, please. Okay, thank you very much. So first of all, thank you, Mayor and Councillors, for the opportunity to present tonight. Um, my name is Jason Sumner. I'm a town planning consultant. I've been dealing with this application uh, right from the very start. Um, I have reviewed the council officer's report and the conditions and there's no objection to any of those. We're, we're very happy with the report and the conditional requirements. Now, I'd probably like to first, first off just sort of state that the intention of childcare centres are to provide a service to the local community. So they, they are quite important within the, the scope of a, a community as they tend to accommodate people within local catchment. And that is why quite often childcare centres are actually positioned within an accessible location to a residential environment. And, and this is actually reflected within the planning scheme policies, including the purpose of the zone, which specifically states that um, such activities as medical centre, childcare centres, et cetera, are part and parcel of a residential environment and are certainly allowed within, the, within such an environment. So that's actually within the purpose of the neighbourhood residential zone. It's also... Um, yeah, not only do these centres offer the opportunity for children to learn and socialise before they start preschool, which is quite an important aspect of their development, but they also allow for parents to be able to return to the workforce. And there's been a lot of state and federal government support for additional childcare funding and provision of more childcare centres. And that's it's, it's actually quite important in the current environment we've got at the moment, um, with the rising, rising cost of living and interest rates and what have you, that many particularly younger couples or people with, with a you know, single parents, whatever, are able to find affordable and easily accessible childcare centres so that they are actually able to return to the workforce and, and earn themselves a living. So in regards to this particular application, it, it's important to bear in mind that the, the hours of operation are generally quite similar to most other businesses. So while it, open, it will open at 6.30, that's predominantly for um, the staff to start arriving to set, set up for the day. And, and you do find that there are occasionally yeah, a small number of children that will arrive at before, say, 7 o'clock. But really, the staff and the children start to arrive at about 7 a.m. in the morning. And that arrival is over an extended period of time. So you don't get this sort of mad rush like you get with a school where everybody arrives within you know, a period of 30, 30 minutes or so. What you have is the children arriving 
you know, anywhere from 6.30 through to 9.30, 10 o'clock in some instances. So you tend to have sort of a steady flow rather than a mad rush. And, and that's also the same for in the evenings at the pickup time as well. So the centre will, will close by 6.30 p.m. So there'll be no noise, no lights, no traffic at six, after 6.30 p.m. Or very importantly, on the weekend. So I quite often say that childcare centres, in many respects, are actually good neighbours simply because the main operating times are during normal business hours when a lot of people Thanks. are at work. So, sorry, then, sorry, Jason, you're just on the three minutes. If you could wrap it up in the next couple yes, of sentences. Uh, Thank you. Absolutely. Um, look, what I'll say is we've considered the, the acoustics. Acoustics has been dealt with. We've had independent traffic assessment report, which has been supported by the Council of Traffic Engineers, and we've put a great deal of thought into potential amenity impact for this particular application, and we're quite satisfied we've come up with a very good outcome for the site. And we'd be absolutely delighted if the council were supportive of this application and granted a, a planning permit for us. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. Um, councillors, do you have any questions to put to officers or to Jason? No? All right, then. If there are no questions, um, could I please have a motion? Officer recommendation? Great. So, Councillor Bolton to move. Uh, do we have a seconder? Councillor Pulford to second. Councillor Bolton. Sorry to interrupt. We can't hear. Sorry, I can't hear anything. Oh, all right. Sorry, I forgot to press That's the green okay. button. Can you hear now? Can you hear now? Yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry. Go ahead, um, Councillor Bolton. I'm speaking in favour of this application in particular um, because this is a little tiny corner of the, our municipality which is surrounded by massive roads, not just, um, not just roads of the scale of Bell Street but, you know, bigger than Bell Street. Um, and I think... Um, I think a childcare centre is needed within this community. I know there is one in um, Gowanbrae. I inquired about that the other day. Um, but I think there does need to be a childcare centre within this community so that people don't have to cross these incredibly busy roads in order to access um, childcare centres. Um, I think this is a bit different to the... Pre the previous application that we've just voted on. Um, it's got a lot more detail about a number of um, aspects of the um, plans for the centre than the previous application um, that we voted on just before. Um, and I feel comfortable. I mean, obviously it does increase more usage into the area, more traffic, that's true. But I feel um, that some of the problems with the last um, applica previous application don't exist to the same degree with this particular application. So I think this um, having an, a childcare uh, facility within this um, little pocket, I think, will be a bonus for this community. Thanks, Councillor Bolton. Councillor Pulford? Yeah, great. OK, are there any councillors who would like to speak against this motion? Yep. Any other councillors who wish to speak in favour of this motion? All right, well, we might put that one to the vote then. All those in favour? All those against? That's carried unanimously. Okay. Um, so, Jessica, um, if you could please now outline the next steps, um, that would be great. Uh, thank you. Uh, the council has decided to issue a notice of decision to grant a planning permit for the use and development of the land for a childcare centre subject to conditions contained within the officer recommendation. Uh, the notice of decision will be provided to both the applicant and all objector parties. Objectors will have 28 days to appeal council's decision at the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal. In the event that no p appeal is lodged, a planning permit will be issued. Um, in this circumstance, the applicant then has 60 days from the date of issue to appeal any conditions on the permit. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our last one for tonight is 5.4, which is 300 to 302 Ligon Street. 
uh, Brunswick East planning application MPS slash 2021 slash 138 slash B. Does any councillor have a conflict of interest? No? Great. So I'll now ask Keaton Patterson, the Acting Commercial Priorities Senior Urban Planner, to present the report. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, councillors. Uh, the Uh, the proposal relates to the construction of an eight-storey building at 300 to 302 Ligon Street in Brunswick East. Uh, the site is located on the e eastern side of Ligon Street. It's currently uh, occupied by a smash repairs workshop. Um, in, in the immediate vicinity uh, to the north is an 11-storey residential building. Uh, at the rear is a is a laneway uh, with two two dwellings uh, at nine and eleven Gale Street. Uh, the the adjoining buildings, uh, the remaining adjoining buildings on Gale Street are large warehouse buildings, um, and these properties are all located in the mixed use zone, in which are also in the activity centre. Uh, we're looking here at the subject site in red uh, and recently uh, constructed buildings are in green. Uh, here's the existing streetscape um, with the subject site roughly in the center. Uh, to the left is the 11-story building to the north um, mentioned uh, before. Um, and uh, I think six stories uh, buildings Further to the south, I think there's six. Um, and here's the view from the laneway and the view of the dwellings, uh, the, the, the rear of the dwellings at 9 and 11 Gale Street. Now the site's in the commercial one zone, uh, which is affected by the DDO 19, uh, and also in the parking overlay one. Uh, it's also in the Brunswick Activity Centre. Um, the DDO 19 outlines a preferred height of 23 metres and a preferred street wall height of four storeys. Uh, the, 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 the site had, uh, possesses an, an, an existing permit with accrued development rights for a seven storey commercial building with uh, featuring 13 offices 11 car parking spaces and th 38 bicycle spaces. Uh, the proposed amendment adds the construction of one additional level, the eighth storey. Uh, this will add an additional height of 3.35 metres to the existing approved building, uh, which will also add two ten tenancies to be used as offices, um, resulting in a total of 15 office tenancies in the building and six additional bicycle spaces, re resulting in 44 bicycle spaces across all levels and no change to car parking, which uh, remains at 11 car parking spaces. Uh, there were 11 objections received, uh, mainly relating to the building height, uh, overdevelopment of the area and overshadowing. Uh, a, a PID was scheduled for the 1st of May, uh, however, no, no att objectors attended, so uh, it was uh, cancelled or didn't proceed. Uh, the, the important things to note, are, uh, the consideration for this amendment is limited to the construction of the additional eighth storey, uh, as there is already a permit for a seven storey building. The, propo the proposed eighth storey fits in comfortably with the surrounding context, which uh, contains buildings constructed up to eight and 11 storeys in height. The eighth storey provides a compliant DDO 18 upper level setback above, street, uh, above the street wall, uh, which the street wall requires three, met three metres and the proposal provides 3.5. Uh, the site is, located adjacent to, is, is not located adjacent to any heritage buildings, so there's no concern there. And the additional eighth storey height uh, will not result in any overshadowing of, on the western side of Ligon Street, up of the Ligon Street footpath between uh, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. at the equinox when uh, uh, 
street on street dining might might be uh, expected and so the uh, it is council officers recommendation that a notice of decision to grant an amended planning permit be issued great thank you um so we've got no objectors um, have indicated that they wish to speak. So we do, though, have Max Michelli, the applicant, who I believe is online. Is Max in the waiting room? All right, well, oh, here we go. Hello? Hello, Max, can you hear me? I can, can you hear me? Yes, fantastic, yes. you've oh, got excellent. three minutes. Thank you. Uh, all right, lovely. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present today. So I'm Max Michelli from MOS Architects. Uh, we prepared the design documents for this application. So things are a little bit different tonight. I can probably give you many reasons why we think that this is a good development and appropriate for the area. But I speak at today's council meeting being fully aware that my comments are biased. We are here to defend our design and support our client. We have an agenda. That is, we've been engaged by our client to do a job. This doesn't mean that we ride roughshod over the planning system. We have worked with the council planners to arrive at the proposal that is before you. We are passionate about our work and will not undertake a proposal that is unreasonable given the context. Uh, I guess neighbours also have an agenda. Often people do not want change, but that doesn't mean that things shouldn't change. We have reviewed the objections, prepared our responses and made ourselves available at the arranged consultation meeting to respond to each of their concerns. And no objector was in attendance that evening. The question we should ask is, who here doesn't have an agenda? Who understands the planning scheme has a thorough understanding of the application and are experts in these matters. This is the Marybeck Planning Department and its officers. They have no agenda, nor do they have anything to gain or lose from this project. They are doing their job, which they've been trained and qualified to do. These are the people we should listen to. They have assessed the application, provided the report on their findings and have given us their recommendations. We urge council to listen to their planners and seriously consider their report before making a decision on this matter. So I guess, and thank you. I just really all I had to say on the matter. Thanks, thanks, Max. Um, I'll just see if any councillors have got. Yep, just give me a sec. Questions of officers or of Max? Um, Councillor Conlon, was that a question for Max or for the officer? Um, for Max. Yep. Great. Okay. Ask away. Hi, councillor. Hi, Max. Um, just wondering if you can give us a bit of info, more info about what's changed between um, the last permit that uh, the applicant was issued and now, um, and why the extra story. I've heard that the one of the reasons was about commercial viability, but I'm wondering how or why it was commercially viable before, but not now. Look, uh, fundamentally, it's that we originally went for eight stories. We did get support, but at, at the council meeting, the, the floor was taken off. Originally, the client thought he could make it work. Um, at the, so we didn't lodge a VCAT objection. It was basically go ahead, let's do it. But the circumstances, what's going on now with uh, cost of uh, materials and cost of trades, it's just the numbers weren't stacking up because this job is going to is going to fall to the wayside. And he was frustrated because he genuinely wanted to do it at the story lower, and that's why we didn't. He didn't uh, say to lodge. We had to come into another uh, application. So it's fundamentally got to do with the job is no longer going to work at that that height. It's just the cost of materials and the cost of the, the labour component is just ridiculously expensive. So we went back and we looked at the shadows and we looked at everything again and we're going, well, we're not, are we impacting on this development? We're not re on, on the adjoining properties, are we? So it was, it was a, we laboured over it. The client did and they said, look, I think I need that. Otherwise this job is going to stay, the warehouse is going to stay the way it is uh, and, and uh, he, can't, he can't make it work at this time, perhaps in a couple of years time, he can look at it again, but at the moment, it's functional property. But he's genuinely interested in developing the land and proceeding with it as soon as possible. 
Thanks. So, so I'm sorry, but that's what it is. It's fundamentally the numbers just will not work for him. Thank, thanks, Max, for providing that, that explanation. I'll see if there are any other questions of councillors. Nope. All right. If not, um, we might then move to a motion. Um, so thanks, Max, for taking the time to come in. I see Thank Councillor you. Bolton is already on her feet. Can I clarify what motion you'd like to move? Mm -hmm. I'll second. Sorry, Stu, so can you put your microphone I didn't on? hear that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right, let's make Sorry. sure we can hear that. <laughs> um, my motion is to refuse the amendment. Yep. Um, and it's on the screen, although I notice there's one letter missing, which is quite important. It should say perhaps the development a further story or one further story, either or. Um, oh, okay, yes. It just says further story without saying, you know, what. Um, so I've got a second, so I'll speak to it. I've got no objection to the development. I mean, the the, the, the developer has already got a permit for seven stories. Um, I do appreciate and, you know, I think it is important to have more office space in, in Meribet Council area. Um, and I also don't think it matters that there haven't been any objectors to speak here tonight. Um, but I fundamentally believe that given that Council went through an extensive consultation many years ago to determine height limits, I just don't think we should um, keep on granting permits over the height limit. Now, I know the current permit actually is over the height limit, and it does sound like this is a bit more a more reasonable developer that they didn't challenge um, the council's previous decision in VCAT and they did try and make it work. But still, any decision we make about this application has an implication um, for other developments because every time we grant an application that goes further above the height limit, it incentivises other developers to put in applications above the height limit. And so why did we go through all of that public consultation about um, the Brunswick Structure Plan all those years ago and determine our preferred height limits if we're going to continually um, grant applications over those height limits? Because that's where what emerging character of in terms of height or emerging height limits um, for developments mean. It means that we've granted a lot of applications over the height limit. And so it means that developers are setting the height limit rather than a democratic process through um, co public consultation. So that's my reason for opposing this application. It's not to do with whether or not the original application was um, that we approved was a good or a bad one. I th think it is probably quite a good one, but it is um, a fundamental democratic principle. Thanks, Councillor Bolton. Councillor Conlon is the seconder. Yeah, um, so I'm also very opposed to um, this uh, this phenomenon where basically a developer gets um, issued a permit and then they um, come back to council later on asking for um, uh, an increased um, heights or yields in their development. So it basically this, this is exactly the type of thing that actually encourages land banking, land speculation, um, and actually slows um, and stops development in the municipality when the council applies its own rules flexibly. Because it's pretty obvious to see how this works out, right? Like the council issues a permit, developers got um, a permit to build to a certain height, which um, increases the value of the land to build that certain thing. Um, so then what they do is they wait for land values to rise, come back to the council and ask for um, a higher and taller building and therefore increasing their um, the, the value of that property without having actually done anything on that property. So this is this is exactly the type of um, uh, thing that encourages uh, land speculators and developers to actually not build in Marybeck because if they think if they know that the council is just going to rubber stamp these um, types of amendments, it actually um, yeah it actually does the opposite of uh, providing uh, encouraging development. So. 
it, it's a terrible phenomenon. I know it's not technically in the planning sim that we can, you know, uh, refuse it on these grounds, but we do need to use, um, we need to send a strong political message to developers that we don't bend over backwards for them when they come to us um, asking for amended permits when they've already got a permit because it actually achieves the exact opposite outcome that we're trying to achieve in terms of encouraging this type of uh, development. And it also, yeah, it does, it actively encourages land speculation where people, where uh, you have these developers flipping permits. Um, so yeah, it's a terrible process uh, and we should definitely refuse this. Thanks, Councillor Conlon. I just, I just want to remind councillors just to be cautious. Um, you know, of course we can have the broader political discussion of this, um, but just being cautious of the time and effort that our officers do go into to try and get good outcomes from developers and applicants, no matter what the motive of a developer or applicant is, um, our officers do put a lot of effort into that. So I just hesitate to say um, that we're bending over backwards for developers. Um, Councillor oh, Riley, as yeah. the, as the um, uh, yeah. to speak in favour. Uh, yeah, uh, no, speaking Oh, sorry, against. speaking against. And in favour of the officer recommendation. <laughs> Look, um, uh, it's interesting that we're debating height here. Um, I was not too concerned about this application when it first came up with eight. And I say that with a strong record, where I've always tolerated one or two levels over the preferred height limit. It's not a set limit, councillors. You know that. You're deliberately stepping up against this tonight and sending it, essentially sending it to VCAT, adding costs to the developer, adding costs to council, which means the likelihood of this being ticked off by VCAT is very high. Um, don't need to go there too far, because this is within the tolerance level. This is actually about allowing businesses. It's not putting more apartments in our in our city. And to have people sort of objecting to the, that possibility is sort of interesting. It's also really interesting that if you've been watching our own capital works, it's been blowing out by 10 to 15 per cent. And to think that. I've heard a very reasonable argument from the proponent tonight that they looked at the numbers and they've come back and they're saying the cost of concrete, the concrete cost of steel, the cost of um, employing people and all of the things that go have just gone up through the roof. We've had the same happen on many of our projects, all of our projects, whether that's um, Saxon Street and uh, the, the, the development we've got going there or whether it's the Faulkner um, Aquatic Centre. They're all blown out hugely, and to sort of ignore that fact tonight and accuse, you know, suggest that somehow that they're abusing or flipping land, I don't see that as being the case. I think this is a clearly a genuine kind of approach. Why would they be coming back to get just one more story? They could have flipped it already without doing this and leaving it to the next um, owner. But I suspect they want to build it. That's what he, they're undertaking to do tonight. So I just think this is um, people being very fundamental. They're being very quibbling over things. And really, whilst, um, you know, I prefer to have a, a set height limit, and I, in fact, on a street like this, I'd like to see us stepping it down from the north so that the next building builds lower and lower, so that the shadow um, is, is, is reduced as it goes down, not increased. But that's something that the, there's no provisions in our planning scheme for that. We can't do that. But this is, seems to be a reasonable request. Um, and I just think VCAT will tick it off at the end of the day. Um, so if we had set height limits, I could understand the arguments that are being proposed tonight, but they're not set, they're um, preferred. And so I think to be too hard, if it was three or four or five, I would be definitely standing up and proposing this, but I think one or two, and in this case one, so I think it's, it's kind of reasonable in the, in the economic circumstances. Thanks, Councillor Riley. I'll see if there's another speaker in favour of this refusal motion. Any other uh, in favour? Yes. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Hart. Um, yeah, I'll just be um, brief. The other councillor has just made the, the key points. Um, oh, sorry. No. Yes. There we go. The, Mic's on. Get okay. The hang of it by the end of the night. Um, yeah, I'll just I'll just be brief. I guess what concerns. Um, me and I, I do hear the comments of um, Councillor Raleigh in terms of the um, what was put forward by the developer tonight about the um, increased costs because we're, we're all aware of the constraints uh, that are operating at the moment. But I am concerned if that then becomes 
a basis then for how we make decisions which in effect reverse a previous decision that the council has made because I think that affects to me the integrity of the initial decision and doesn't preserve the integrity of that decision. And it concerns me then if that then becomes um, a decision, you know, a decision making guidance and what that sets up um, as precedent. So I'm actually concerned, I can hear, um, and I think it can be sometimes very difficult um, to distinguish between someone who genuinely looks at um, a dilemma they've got and how do we, how do we make this work um, and others whose motives um, might be different. And I, I don't think we're in a position to, to speculate about that, um, although I do hear those concerns. But um, I support the um, refusal motion um, on that basis. Thanks, Councillor Hart. Um, do we have any other speakers against this refusal motion? Any speakers in favour of the refusal motion? No, all right, we might go back to Councillor Bolton to exercise her right of reply. I'm uh, here. Uh, your, your mic, yeah. <laughs> I think I'll be, there isn't much to add, so I'm not gonna say much. I think the critical thing is that every time we pass a development that's above the height limit, it incentivizes develop, other developers to go even higher. And so I think, so we do have in the municipality in certain areas a creeping height increase well, well above the height limits that were, we voted on um, a, a number of years ago. And so I think we've got to think about that. Um, I'm not comfortable with granting, tolerating one or two levels above the height limit. Um, I mean, otherwise it was pointless us going through the democratic process those years ago about to set, um, set height limits. And we do have set height limits, but we're not allowed to make them mandatory, but that's the state government. And, you know, I think they've got their uh, reasons and I don't agree with their reasons as to why they want this um, discretionary focus um, in planning. Uh, I don't agree with that. But I think we do have to be conscious that every time we pass a development above the height limit, it gives an incentive to developers to go, other developers to go even higher. Thanks, Councillor Bolton. So we'll put that one to the vote then. All those in favour of the refusal motion, got one, two, three, four. All those against the refusal motion, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I might do a division on that one. So all those in favour were Councillor Bolton, Councillor Hart, Councillor Pavlides and Councillor Conlon. And all those against were Councillor Pulford, Councillor Riley, myself, Councillor Davidson, Councillor Tapanos and Councillor Carly Hannon. And so given that that motion has um, failed, we'll need another one and I can see Councillor Riley, you've just stuck your hand up. Great. I'll see if you've got a seconder for the officer recommendation. And I see Councillor Carly Hannon's hand up. Is that? Yep, for the officer rec. Great. Okay, Councillor Riley. I don't think I need to speak um, any further. Well, I <laughs> accept to say that there are upper setbacks on this. Um, and this is going to provide new businesses opportunities to take up in Ligon Street, which would be a nice change from all of the um, apartments we're getting. So, I, yeah. Great, thanks, Councillor Riley. Councillor um, Carly Hannon. Um, yeah, nothing much further from me. Just to really add that, you know, I do believe that we need discretionary heights. And the reason for that is that there needs to be nuances and understandings around um, the different contexts when we're dealing with different developments. And I think what the um, developer said today about costs is something that we can't just, you know, ignore when these kind of concerns come up. As Councillor Riley said, we as a council know the impact that these things are having. But the other thing that frustrates me is I see more and more the debates we're having in these chambers as if we as a municipality sit, you know, solo and are only dealing with our own issues. But we have to take on the challenges that are facing 
our entire city and our entire state. So when it comes to things like housing affordability, um, where people are going to live, access to transport, access to amenities, we need to be thinking about that context when we make these decisions. And that's why just looking at height alone, to me, is so simplistic and it frustrates me to no end because it's very, you know, it can actually be quite nimby, really, when you actually look at the whole context and what people in places like Micklem and Calcalo have to deal with. Uh, I really feel passionately that we should be thinking about the impact, not just on our residents, but the entire city when we make decisions. Thanks, Councillor Carly Hannon. I'll see if there are any speakers against the officer recommendation. Councillor Conlon. Yeah, um, I guess just to clarify some of my comments. So I guess, yeah, like, I mean, I'm not against that. I'm not necessarily against the idea of having office proposals. It's more against this, the, the process and that we're talking about, which is um, issuing permits and then um, amending them for higher and um, for bigger buildings, because that's the thing that actually does the opposite of what we're trying to achieve, because it encourages um, landowners to sit on those pro um, properties and then just continuously wait to um, f uh, flip those permits. Like, it, it's a thing, like, it, there's, like, there's decades of data showing that this happens. It's like a causal relationship between the council flexibly applying its um, planning controls um, and then develop, uh, leading to land banking in in, um, in those uh, municipalities. So it's not that I'm against, like, I get, I get, I agree. I think offices in this part of the, the municipality are good and it's good that we're not just getting um, more and more residential, but like, uh, and I, I appreciate what Carly, Councillor Carly Hannon is saying about, you know, we're not an isolated council working on our own, but I guess the answer to a broken system to me is not just to kind of, what's a, a better word, the rollover or whatever it is, just to kowtow to that system. We do need to be sending political messages where we can. I know it's not always possible to do that, but we do need to sort of take a stand um, so that we are sending some kind of message to the development industry about how we treat these types of applications because they do listen. It's, it is commented on in the media and it does send some kind of message. I know it's not the um, it's not going to fix the entire systemic issue of the broken planning system, but it really, to me, is not the answer, is just to go, oh, you know, we've got no power, let's just, you know, roll it all through. I'm not saying people are doing that, but I think, you know, we do need to pick battles and pick our stand. And again, an issue like this, which is about um, where there's direct, in, uh, there's so much information and research that shows that this type of process encourages land speculation and land banking. It's really not a good idea for council to sort of really willingly you know, give, give in to developers when they're flipping permits like this. Well, if I'm, whether this guy, this developer's flipping or not, I mean, the, it's, the process is not good. Thanks, Councillor Conlon. I'll see if there are any other speakers in favour of this um, motion. Uh, Councillor Tapanos? Yeah, just to be brief and kind of remind councillors that this is not a time for... Um, uh, political messages or so. Our job here tonight is to assess this application based on the planning scheme and give it a fair hearing. And when you do that and when you consider um, the application and the planning scheme and the future and the, its previous permit, uh, you can only really come up to one logical decision and that is to support this planning application. Um, I understand the concerns about the planning scheme more broadly, but we as a council have other mechanisms through our advocacy campaigns, through our strategic planning departments to actually influence the planning scheme as a whole. Uh, today, we really should be making a decision based on the merits um, of this application. And uh, yes, it, you know, one additional story, um, that needs to be judged uh, in as far as the design, its location, and, and, and in a really holistic sort of way. And when you do that, um, one additional story does not sort of add um, or create any additional problems in my view, and there's no reason for it not to be granted. Thank Great. you. Thanks, Councillor Tapanos. Any other speakers against this motion? No, all right. Any other speakers in favour? No, uh, Councillor Riley, do you wish to exercise your right of reply? That's a no. All right, then we'll put that one to the vote. All those in favour of this motion? One, two, three, four, five, six. All those against? One, two, 
three, four, and we'll do the division on that one. So all those in favour were Councillor Pulford, Councillor Riley, myself, Councillor Davidson, Councillor Tapanos, and Councillor Carly Hannon. And all those against were Councillor Pavlides, Councillor Conlon, Councillor Bolton, and Councillor Hart. Okay, so um, thanks, councillors. I'll now ask the officer to outline the next steps. Thank you. Uh, council has decided to issue a notice of decision to grant a p planning permit for an amendment to the permit to allow for the construction of an eight-storey building at 300 to 302 Ligon Street, Brunswick East, subject to the conditions contained within the officer report. Following the issue of a notice of decision, both the applicant and all objector parties will, have, will receive a copy of the notice of decision to grant an amended planning permit. Objectors will have 28 days to appeal council's decision at the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal. In the event that no appeal is lodged at VCAT, a planning permit will be issued. If a permit is issued, the applicant has 60 days from date of issue of the notice of decision to appeal any conditions on, on the permit. Thank you. Um, as there are no other items of business, I'll now close the meeting at 8.18pm. Thanks, everyone.